Matthew chapter 16, I want to speak from this subject today, winning at all costs. Winning at all costs. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say winning, winning. at all costs. Cost. My brothers and sisters, I'd argue, get this now, that we've become too complacent in succumbing to our set. And to that end, it was the words of the great pronosticator who once posited that a setback is a setup for a comeback. And fam, it is with emphatic intensity on this morning that I'm here to declare, like the Hall of Famer basketball player Magic Johnson, it's winning time. He coined that phrase because he said that it's a certain point of the game where you got to put the little kids to sleep and the grown folk got to come out and close this game out. It's usually like the last five minutes of the game that when all the odds are stacked against you, that you pull from deep within that internal fortitude that you have and you become a winner. And so, my brothers and sisters, we come to this text, this Mathenian text, and it's on the heels of a Mathenian Jesus. He's walking into cities and through cities, and he's exposing the communities to miraculous power. But what was unique about this miraculous power, brother, preacher, is these things that they have never seen before. So he was literally blowing their mind. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we understand the context of this text, Melissa, we would see a Jesus who himself is ensured that he would remain focused, committed, and dedicated to what he was called to do. Yeah. Jesus, the all-powerful one, the one who has God in his DNA because he is God. Yeah. And even though God had the propensity to snap and everything that happened would happen because God snapped, Jesus still found himself engaged in his earthly assignment. So if Jesus, the one who has nothing to lose but everything to gain because he is a winner, he was a winner, he will always be a winner, but he still found within himself to get busy doing what he was called to do. Because he understood that what makes me a winner is not necessarily what I have, but what makes me a winner is the commitment into what I'm supposed to be. And see, my brothers and sisters, we think that we are a winner because we have assets. But no, you are a winner when you have concerted action. You got the wrong A. You got to learn how to ask God what it is that you're supposed to be doing, how to do it, and start doing it. The problem is many of us are living a life that is not fulfilling unto ourselves and unto God because you have not aligned yourself with the reason why you was born. It was the great philosopher who once said that the two most important days of your life is the day that you were born and the day you discover why. Y'all miss this up in here. And so many of us know our birth date but we don't know our why date. Oh, I feel like preaching. And so my brothers and sisters, we're going around and we're pity patting with this thing called life because life has taken a hold on us but when you understand your why you take a hold on life look at your neighbor and say I'm about to take life by its wings come on here I need somebody to look at your neighbor and say I'm getting ready to get a hold of this thing called life because Jesus said that I come that you might have life in other words if he come that you might have life and he already came that means you ought to be living that word life means that I have the ability to breathe despite the chaos my brothers and sisters all I want to say to you that no matter what's going on in your life you still need to breathe oh I miss this Look at your neighbor and say, you need to breathe, you need to breathe, you need to breathe, you need to breathe, you need to breathe. And so Jesus was winning. The people, my brothers and sisters, understood that maybe this Jesus is somebody I need to listen to. Okay, let, let me ask you like this. Who has your ear? Who do you have enough confidence and faith in to tell your most inner secrets all to discover that it leaked anyway? 
Because anything that has a mouth has the propensity to be a leaker. Y'all miss this up in here. So I don't care how saved and sanctified they appear to be. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. There are very few people in this world that you can tell them about your life and it don't go anywhere. Y'all miss this up in here. And see, we're so busy depositing our information into sources because they can shout and they can dance and they can sing. But you don't know that the devil can also shout. The devil can also dance and the devil can also sing. Feeling what they don't know, the devil can speak in tongue. Y'all miss this up in here. There is a devil that can speak in tongue better than those who are filled with the Holy Ghost. And so you are fooled, my brothers and sisters, by outward activity. You are fooled by the emotive. When God is saying, I'm not trying to get you to be emotive, but I'm trying to get you to produce energy. There is a difference from being emotive and energy. Energy is something that's everlasting, something that helps you matriculate through this thing called life. Emotions is something that comes and goes. One day you're hot, one day you're not. One day you're sad, one day you're mad, one day you're glad, one day you're up, one day you're down. But you need to, my brothers and sisters, understand that God has called you to be consistent and persistent with this thing called life. And until you get consistent and persistent, you will always be a loser. Stop waking up and trying to accomplish every idea that comes to your mind. You need to get somewhere and get settled in on something and work that plan and plan to work and work that plan and plan to work and go back and strategize and assess where you are and keep moving. Just because it didn't work the first time does not mean you weren't called to do it. You just need a little more diligence in your assignment. Look at your neighbor and say, you still got some stuff that you left on the table. Come on. Tell him you still got some stuff that you left on the table. It's the goodness of God that he didn't allow you to die yet because you don't want to die not fulfilling your purpose you want to get to heaven and when you get to heaven you want the Lord to say well done oh my God my good and faithful servant enter into my presence because you have been faithful over what I've called you to do you don't want God to look at you and say why did you leave some on the table y'all misses you got too much stuff you left on a plate you got too many places that God is trying to get you to go you got too many dimensions that God is trying to get you to reach you got to move look at your neighbor and say when I move you move just like that you got to learn how to move I cannot win if I don't move come on in the Holy Ghost and so my brothers and sisters here Jesus in this Mathenian text gives a blueprint that sets us up for winning because if I want to be winner a winner my brothers and sisters there's three things I got to win against y'all miss this up in here we are fighting against three things the first thing Dr. Grayland is we got to win against ourselves come on shout hallelujah I got to win against myself oh man because a lot of us seem to believe that the reason why we're losing because other folks are in our life. A lot of us seem to believe that the devil has us losing but the fact of the matter is God has deposited such a grace on us that we have to get out of our own way. You don't believe it? Look at the text. The text says in Matthew 16, come on later, verse 24, Jesus said to his disciples that if anyone wants to become my followers, let them what? Deny themselves. See, when you preach the text, you preaching the truth. You ain't got to worry about preaching nothing else. Let them what? Deny themselves. In other words, if anybody want to walk in purpose and be in my footsteps and be in my shadow and do what I called you to do, you got to deny yourself. Notice that Jesus did not deal with the exterior. He dealt with the interior because though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. And when I get myself together, then I can get my stuff together. But I cannot get my stuff together before I get myself together. And the reason why your stuff is jacked up because you jacked up but if you grow up your stuff will grow up if you grow up then your life will blow up but as long as you sit there trying to acquire things and not acquire self-worth you will go nowhere you got to look at yourself and say I am enough let them deny themselves that word not deny my brothers and sisters from the Greek it suggests to turn from that which hinders commitment. I'll say that again. To turn from. It's a kind of repentance. Repentance means to turn. It means to turn away from stuff that hinders my ability to be committed. Mm -hmm. See, if you look at your life, there are some things that you have not looked at fine enough to realize it's the small things that are stopping you 
because you're so busy looking macro when God is trying to get you to zoom in to micro. And so that's why Jesus said, you got to deny yourself. You got to, you got to rid yourself of things that hinder commitment. But he said, let them deny. Let them turn away from stuff that hinders commitment. But who is he talking about? Themselves. In other words, the Jesus of the text introduced an ideology to the community that you need to turn away from your own self. Because the enemy, the enemy is really the enemy. Y'all miss this up in here. The enemy is what's causing me for not to not to go to the next level. And so, my brothers and sisters, here's the unfortunate misnomer. The unfortunate misnomer is that we have convinced ourselves that our failure to win is a result of situations and or people around us. But in the real sense of the thing, the failure to win is because it's you. Because winning is a mindset. Winning is a mindset. You got to wake up and say, I'm going to win this day. And so my brothers and sisters, you're trying to win in life, but you need to win your hour. Y'all miss this up in here. You got to start with the seconds. That the next 60 seconds, I'm going to think on these things. I'm going to think on bold things. I'm going to think on great things. Because greater is the God that is in me than the devil that's in the world. And then once you win 60 seconds, which is in a minute, then you need to win a half hour. For the next 30 minutes, I will not think about failure, but I will think about my future because what I failed in the past has set me up for my future. And then once you win 30 minutes, you need to win an hour and say for 60 minutes, I'm speaking nothing but favor over my life because the favor of the Lord is on me. And then once you win an hour, you need to win a half a day. You need to say when I go to work, nobody's going to piss me off because eyes have not Sing. Come on up in here. And ears have not heard. Who you giving enough authority on your job to tick you off? My brothers and sisters, I walk every day in the hallway of my job like I'm everything. And the reason why I walk like I'm everything, because I serve a God who has everything. And if I serve a God who has everything, that means I have everything to my availability. And so I don't look down at what I don't have, because I know it was God who brought me from the hood to being an administrator of a school. It was God who brought me from the hood to found the church for people coming to worship. It was God who brought me from the hood to have my own consulting practices. It was God who brought me from the hood to be able to communicate with the most intellectual ones. It was God who brought me from statistics to status. Y'all miss this up in here. And God want to remove you from being a statistic to having some status. Look at your neighbor and say, I got to get my status. I got to I gotta get my status. I'm a boss in my own right. Look at your neighbor and say, I got boss on me. I got boss on me. I got boss on me. You ain't looking at your neighbor. I got boss on me. I got boss in me. I got boss around me. See, the reason why y'all ain't winning because you can't even speak for Y'all so busy arguing about Dion leaving HBCUs to higher grounds when you ain't got a dime in your pocket. I ain't gonna lie to you. God bless you, Dion, wherever you go. But until I get 40 million, I don't care what you talking about. He's moving somewhere else and y'all getting it to it about that. The devil is a liar. It's a small-minded people. devil is a liar to say he don't love black people because he went to another institution. The devil is a liar. God will position you in places to effect change when nobody else can. God will put you in systems to change systems. And y'all want to keep people down based off your own feelings and you ain't even got nothing. You hate us? Y'all ought to thank God that a black man has moved up. Y'all miss this up in here. Y'all ought to thank God that a black man has went from high school to college to the NFL to coaching high school to HBCU. Put them on a map. Now everybody talking about HBCU. Now he can get another black man to tear that program off that never would have had the opportunity. Y'all missing God in all of this. You got folk who ain't never went to college talking about they upset. Now I ain't talking about if you didn't go to college, but you ought to shut up. Never matriculate in the institution. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, I'm preaching up in this house. But I'm not worried about people right now. I'm worried about myself. 
That's why when I look in the mirror, if I'm not happy about myself, the way I look, you got to do something about it. You got to go run some laps. Come on, shout hallelujah. It ain't going to come out just because you're praying it off. Somebody shout hallelujah. You got to eat right. Come on, y'all don't want to hear this up in here. You keep talking, ooh, this clothes don't fit on me. It don't fit on me because you ain't fitting in it. Y'all miss this up in here. But if you lose a little bit, you'll get in it. Somebody shout hallelujah. He preaching to you. He preaching, don't get mad at me. I'm just a messenger. I'm not the message. Somebody shout hallelujah. And some of y'all already got your dinner on your mind. Fried this, fried that, fried that, lay to the side, and then you wait up and toss it. Oh, I look bad. You look bad because you eat too much fried chicken. <laughs> Not realizing, get this now, that gluttony is a sin. You so busy worrying about what somebody's smoking and you sin and eating. They smoke a natural herbs and you eat in processed food. Oh, y'all ain't gonna like this type of preaching. Y'all miss this up in here. They smoking plant-based stuff and you eating processed stuff. And some of them are saved in the cannabis industry, industry making millions of dollars, but you tell us, no, that ain't good because they going to hell. Well, no, you going to hell with your mindset. So y'all don't want to hear this type of preaching. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you don't think you're smart enough, read more. Take an online course. Got plenty of free ones. Do something. If you want to understand something, go to YouTube University if you don't have the money to go to college. Somebody shout hallelujah. But don't listen to people who are just doing reels on YouTube. Stop trying to just do reels when you don't have influence. Somebody shout hallelujah. An influence is not one who gets a million likes. An influence is one who is walking in a purpose. I cannot influence if I'm not a influence. Y'all missing something here. I have to be an influence to influence. And if you try to influence when you don't have any influence. Because yourself is jacked up. Talking about my gifts will make room for me, but you have not made room to hone in on your gift. You're raggedy in every way of life. You're not sharpening your skills. Iron sharpens iron. You can't sit there and talk to somebody with an antithetical view of yours and have an intellectual conversation. At the end of the day, both of you all have expressed your views and you can part and still be friends, but you mad because they didn't agree with you. If everybody in my circle agree with me, I'm in the wrong circle. I, if I got five people in my circle, I need five perspectives. I don't need a yes man or a yes woman. I need someone who say, no, you're wrong. And I say, no, I'm right. Well, let's wrestle. Let's all Let's debate. Let's be an apologist by our theology, our ideology, and our sociology. But we cannot do that because we don't have the intellectual capacity to communicate that which we need to because you won't learn. You haven't learned anything. Too many of us have the ability to be smart, but we're not smart. Smartness is not given. Smartness is earned. Let this mind be in you, which also in Christ Jesus. So I have, to, I have to win against myself. Number two, get this now. I got to win against moments. So now I have shifted my, my understanding once I got myself together. Now I have to win against moments. Look what the text says. It's going to mess you up. Because when God showed me this text, I said, oh, that's pretty dope. Oh, here we go. Uh, he says in the text that you need to deny yourself. And then he said, and take up their cross. Okay, this messed me up because we preach a theology that the cross belongs to Jesus. And through the cross, there's a kind of soteriology. Somebody say soteriology. That means salvation. That because of the cross, which is Christology, the Jesus on the cross informs our soteriology. Whatever I just said, just believe it. So our Christology is the cross. Our soteriology is how we become saved. So our Christology informs our soteriology. In other words, because Jesus died on the cross, we have the ability to be saved. Y'all got that? But here it is. Jesus didn't say, take up my cross. It is 
a kind of pericope that is informing the community that we have to have accountability with God's divinity. It is not until we marry accountability with God's divinity that we become a person that walks in serenity. In other words, I cannot have a serene life if I'm not accountable to the divine. Y'all oh, 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 oh. y'all miss this up in here. You so accountable to a man and to a woman, but you have no spiritual accountability. And the problem is people who are not honorable to God, we honor them. We glorify people in industries that are not honorable to God, but when the man or woman of God is serving judiciously and serving with tenacity, we look beyond them and we won't put the $300 in their hand that you spent on that concert ticket because the pastor don't need that. But it is the pastor who you call on when you need prayer. Oh my God. It Stop honoring people that God does not honor. God honors those who are diligent with their heart. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So one thinking in their heart, so are they. So God saying you got a heart condition which makes your condition in life that of frailty and fragility because you're not submitted to divinity. But divinity means that you got to share in the crucifixion experience. Oh my God. In other words, you too have a cross. You know what your cross are? Feel your cross is it, it, it's moments. Because the cross, the very definition of cross from a Roman perspective, Jesus wasn't the only one that was crucified, by the way. Hallelujah. That was a traditional way to crucify people in Rome. Somebody shout hallelujah. So don't just think Jesus just shared that. So he was really being contextual with their understanding. But here it is. Jesus suggests that we got to carry our own cross, the Athenian Jesus, which means that the cross symbolizes pain because we know that we're going to be hit. Yeah. Yeah. When we carry a cross, and the cross, my brothers and sisters, in this time was just not a piece of wood of number two pencils put together in a T-shape. It was pretty heavy. That when you put it on your back, it literally weighed you down. And you had to carry it up a hill. He carried up a hill called Golgotha. I know this ain't Easter, but anyway, soteriology is relevant anyway. I know I'm supposed to be talking about the birth, but I don't believe that Jesus was born in December, but that's neither here nor there. But anyway, so Jesus says, carry up your cross. In other words, I must carry my pain. Even Jesus did not want the cross. Because Jesus said, Jesus said to God, I don't want to do this. It ain't what I want to do. But the reason why he was able to say this next part, because he had already won the war against himself. And he understood that the cross was just a moment. And that's why he said, Paul, y'all know that, he says, not my will. Because I've given myself unto you. I am accountable to your divinity. So not my will. Because you know you're really in purpose when you call to do something that you don't want to do. Y'all miss this up in here. If everything you're doing is something you want to do, it ain't purpose. Sometimes God's got to stretch you to bless you. Y'all miss this up in here. And stretching hurts. But stretching protects the muscle. So you got to stretch so you won't pull the muscle. And so why it's hurting, in the end you're going to win because stretching gets you to your blessing. He says, carry your cross. In other words, carry your moment. Because the reason why you got to carry your moment, because if we study the text, we understand that the cross had an expiration date. Even before Jesus was resurrected, he was taken off the cross, which means his pain expired before he got up. So there was an interim between pain and resurrection. What was the interim? The interim was that someone had to get permission to touch Jesus. Joseph of Arimathea, come on here, he went to the powers to be that said, let me take him off the cross. In other words, sometimes God will use people around you to bless you, but you're too silly to understand that in the interim, he's paving a way for you. 
That's why the text says if you delight yourself in God, he'll give you the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart sometimes come with your ability to submit to people who are smarter than you. But you're too busy thinking you know everything. God can't get you to the next level. But God said, I got a Joseph of Arimathea that's here to carry you from pain to purpose. Y'all missed this up in here. And then when Joseph carried him into the grave, now he was able to get up. So what once was pain became victory. But you cannot get to Sunday, the resurrection, without going through Friday, the crucifixion. Some of you all are trying to bypass what God has called you to do. So I got to win against my moments. In other words, those things that come to challenge me, I can't sit in regret. I got to press through it because if I press through those moments, then I'll eventually get to my victory. Look at your neighbor and say, resurrection is coming. Resur I done just said a whole lot. You got to go back and rewind it. I got to win against myself. I got to win against moments. But then finally, this a lot of y'all need to do. I got to win against movements. He said, if anyone desires to follow me, let them what? Deny themselves. War against myself. He said, and take up their cross. War and win against moments. But then he said, and follow me. You can't even follow me till you beat yourself. See, I used to get upset when I see people and I minister to people and I say, I'm preaching to them, but they still ain't saved. God said there is a prerequisite to salvation and there's a security in your decision making because salvation is a choice and I cannot make a good choice if my mind is not right. That's why some of us are saved on Sunday and we're not saved on Monday. That's why the Bible says you got to save yourself daily. Oh my God, y'all missed this up in here. So sometimes we fail to operate in that which we are and who we are. He says, you cannot follow me unless you have a cross. You cannot follow me unless you deny yourself. You cannot follow me unless you participate in spiritual disciplines. Stop trying to be saved without praying. Y'all missed this up in here. Stop trying to be saved without fasting. Stop trying to be saved without giving it over to God. Stop trying to be saved without meditating. Y'all want the benefits of God, but you don't want to do the things that take God to move in your life. Get your cross and get to the grave so you can get back up again. When I get to the grave, I'm taking that which need to be dead and I'm leaving it there. Some of us are getting off the grave and we still got our cross so God said you can't follow me until you leave your cross where it is oh my God God is trying to give you new things and you're still complaining about old people therefore if anyone is in Christ they are a new creation all things are what and all things have been so while God is trying to get you to walk in newness you still tripping off oldness so I got the I got the win against movements. Here it is. He says, and follow me. The reason why he says, follow me, because you got to understand context. Mm -hmm. See, too many people are preachers pretty sloppy without giving context. Yeah. Yeah. He's speaking to their understanding of their society. Yeah. Yeah. And in their society, it was a strong imperialistic culture. In other words, imperialism, those who are going against the grain of the understanding of God was reigning supreme. And it seems like those are the people who was being blessed. So he's saying you're looking at stuff that's enticing you, but what is enticing you do not go, does not go with me. In other words, they would create movements. That were, un that were antithetical to God. So Jesus comes along and creates what is called the Jesus movement. Oh my God, go look it up. The Jesus movement replaces that which was old. Y'all missing something. In other words, that all good things come through the Son because it was the blood of God or the blood of Jesus that transformed and transfused us. Y'all missing something here. That's why even if I got a generational line upon me and my mama and my daddy was jacked up, I don't have to be jacked up because I had a blood transfusion. In other words, you're still family, but we don't have the same blood. Y'all miss this up in here. Because you're carrying humanistic blood, but I got the blood of Jesus. Because the blood will reach us to the highest mountain, and it will flow to the lowest valley. The blood that gives us strength from day to day will what? Never lose its power. So they was engaging in movements, and Jesus said, don't do that. Here it is. It's so sad that we as believers follow every trend. If they say... 
uh, uh, how good are your knees? Bad knees challenge. You on a bad knees, bad knees, bad knees, bad knees. Come low, how low, how low? Okay, you go. You, the devil is a liar. You got good knees, but you won't get on your knees to pray to God. Y'all miss this up in here. While you trying to send emails, God is saying you need some knee mail. We know your knees ain't bad, but you ain't praying enough. Stop following movements. You got to win against movements. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. You got to stop following movements and you got to start following God. I said, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to stop following movements and you got to follow God. You ain't looked at your neighbor yet and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to stop following movements and you got to start following God. Do me a favor, if you're not too mean, look at your hands real quick and say, I looked at my hands and my hands look new. I look down at my feet and my feet does too. Have I got a witness? I gotta go, I'm not gonna do this long. But give three people a high five and say, I'm sticking with Jesus. Come on. I say, give three people a high five and tell them I'm sticking with Jesus. You can have movement, but I'm going with the Messiah. You can have movement, but I'm going with Jesus because it was Jesus who woke me up this morning. It was Jesus who put food on my table have I got a witness it wasn't because of your money but it was because of the grace of God look at your neighbor and say neighbor we gotta get out of here but you I said you you gotta stick with Jesus I'm sticking I'm sticking with Jesus I said I'm sticking I'm sticking with Jesus because if I got Jesus, I am a winner. I never go now, but about five people stand on your feet real quick and say, say I am, I am a winner. I said I am, I am a winner. I ain't taking no more L's. I'm a winner over my money. I'm a winner over my family. I'm a winner over my relationships. I'm a winner over my life. Do me a favor. I said, do me a favor. Right back and say, winner. I said, winner. Oh. Everybody standing.